Welcome to the Radiology Review Podcast, your on-the-go source for radiology education with your host, Dr. Matt Covington, a board-certified radiologist. Please follow the podcast on Twitter at RadRevPodcast. Send emails to theradiologyreview at gmail.com or visit the website theradiologyreview.com. Welcome back to the Radiology Review Podcast. On this bonus episode, I will be discussing tips to prepare for nuclear medicine questions on the ABR core exam, ABR certifying exam, and ABR nuclear radiology subspecialty exam. I have taken and thankfully passed all three of these examinations, and I wanted to share some of my thoughts on how you can best prepare yourself to succeed on nuclear medicine questions on ABR board exams. This will accompany a post on this same topic containing much of the same information that will be available on my website, theradiologyreview.com, under the Radiology Review Journal. Among my most popular podcast episodes on the Radiology Review podcast are nuclear medicine reviews. I also receive many messages from listeners about nuclear medicine topics, whether requests to cover a certain area of nuclear medicine, questions about content I already covered in nuclear medicine, or sometimes gratitude for the nuclear medicine topics that I have discussed. I really enjoy seeing and responding to these messages from my listeners. To me, this interest in nuclear medicine for ABR board preparation makes sense. Feedback I have heard from recent ABR test takers is that nuclear medicine is one of the more challenging areas of the ABR core exam. I also have filled the questions regarding the ABR nuclear radiology subspecialty exam on multiple occasions from friends in the nuclear radiology community and listeners, even despite the number of test takers for the ABR nuclear radiology subspecialty exam really being quite small. Nuclear medicine is simply challenging to prepare for, and while only one component of radiology residency training, this subspecialty area seems to rise to particular prominence when board exams come around. I do not mean to give the false impression that nuclear medicine is the dominant subject area for ABR core exams, because it is not. However, nuclear medicine has some unique aspects relative to other subspecialty areas when it comes to ABR board exams. One example is the radioisotope safety exam, which is shortened to RISE, R-I-S-E. That largely tests nuclear medicine regulatory and safety concepts and is mandatory on both the ABR core and ABR certifying exams. Furthermore, nuclear medicine comprises an entire medical specialty, which nuclear medicine is. Indeed, nuclear medicine continues outside of radiology to be a standalone residency. Nuclear medicine has its own separate but related board exam administered by the American Board of Nuclear Medicine. Therefore, For the core exam, the ABR will be testing concepts that are taken from an entire medical specialty in addition to all of the other concepts that you are tested on pertinent more specifically to radiology only. Nuclear medicine touches all other subspecialty areas in some way, and this is important for board exam preparation. For example, a musculoskeletal question could throw in a three-phase bone scan, a neuroradiology question could show you an FDG PET CT of the brain, a cardiac imaging question could show you a myocardial perfusion scan, and an interventional radiology question could show you Y90 planning or post-therapy images, and even breast imaging could show you images from a FDG PET CT scan, potentially FES PET CT scan, or images from sentinel lymph node evaluation. What this all means is that there are many potential avenues for nuclear medicine questions to show up on your ABR core or certifying exams beyond the dedicated specific nuclear medicine questions themselves. Other subspecialty areas could also be testing you, at least in certain ways, on nuclear medicine topics. Let us also not forget physics. 
There is a lot of physics in nuclear medicine, and much of it is extremely testable. Don't forget about quality control in nuclear medicine either, which is perhaps traditionally a hotbed for multiple choice style questions. Oh yeah, and nuclear medicine also has therapies, and you need to not only know what these therapies are and how these therapies are administered, but also what indications they are used for, what contraindications exist for each type of therapy, what are potential toxicities of these therapies, what radiation protection measures must be in place before you treat someone with one of these therapies, and you should be aware of the duration and mechanism of action of the therapies, and so forth. And lest I forget... Nuclear medicine has a historical tendency to sometimes ask questions about not only what is currently in common use in nuclear medicine, but also historical uses of, for radio tracers. That could potentially be something you will never see in your training or future career. Nuclear medicine also may expect you to understand some basics of radio tracers that are largely experimental, but may be used in certain centers now and in coming years elsewhere. In summary, there is no shortage of material that can be tested on nuclear medicine. It is easy for test writers to write questions about things you may have never even seen in your training program on the clinical services. You can expect to be given general nuclear medicine questions, pet imaging questions, therapeutic questions, physics questions, quality control questions, instrumentation questions, radiation safety questions, regulatory questions, historical use questions, emerging use questions, name that radio tracer by imaging appearance alone questions, and so on, and so on. What can you do to maximize your board preparation for nuclear medicine? Here are some of my tips. First, know the fundamentals. Many nuclear medicine questions test fundamental concepts that are not tricky if you have put in the work. These will end up being your easiest questions to get right and require only that you diligently memorize facts in advance. For example, if you memorize the half-lives, energy peaks, critical organs, mode of production, normal biodistribution, and collimators used for various nuclear medicine agents, you will be able to correctly answer many questions that may come your way on a board exam. Additionally, I suggest reading a complete comprehensive nuclear medicine textbook, such as METLER or Requisites, at some point in residency prior to the ABR core exam to make sure you have encountered fundamental concepts for the most common imaging studies and nuclear medicine procedures at least once prior to starting your more intensive board preparation study. These books likely contain description of certain studies, certain therapies, and so forth that you probably will not encounter during your first few years of radiology training because some of these are infrequently performed or only performed at some centers and not others. Therefore, reading a comprehensive nuclear medicine textbook is one way to assure that you have covered at least one time all of the basic fundamental concepts that are most important to an understanding of nuclear medicine. Second, do not underestimate the importance of nuclear medicine physics. Physics is an important part of the ABR core exam, and the physics of nuclear medicine is no exception. Along with understanding how things like gamma cameras and PET cameras work, also study the causes of imaging artifacts. No quality control procedures, such as intrinsic and extrinsic flood tests, that exist to identify and correct imaging artifacts before they become clinically significant. I do not believe you can over-prepare for the physics portion of the ABR core exam in general, and the same sentiment applies for nuclear medicine physics. Prepare diligently to succeed. Third, rise up to succeed on rise. I find what I believe is the final chapter in Mettler's classic nuclear medicine textbook that discusses radioisotope safety and regulation to provide excellent preparation for RISE questions. If you don't have access to Mettler, purchase it, borrow it from a friend or from your training program, 
and prepare for this portion of the exam on both the ABR core and ABR certifying exams. QBanks also can be of assistance here, as many or perhaps all of the major QBanks contain RISE type questions. Fourth, pay attention to nuclear medicine therapies. For nuclear medicine therapies, don't underestimate the importance of knowing absolute and relative contraindications to receive therapy, and understand any tests necessary following therapy to ensure patient safety, such as blood count values. Remember, nuclear medicine therapies extend well beyond I-131. I have covered at least a little bit of some of these therapies on prior podcast episodes, and perhaps a dedicated episode in the future on nuclear medicine therapies could be beneficial. There is so much content to cover, and I try to not focus specifically on nuclear medicine, but I will try to get more of these topics available to you in the future. For nuclear medicine therapies, you also need to understand what radiation exposure mitigation precautions are necessary for the various therapies to protect friends, family, and the general public from individuals who have received nuclear medicine therapies. Fifth, rely on your training program's nuclear medicine physicians to teach you new and emerging radio tracers and nuclear medicine therapies. My suggestion is to ask your nuclear medicine faculty from your current or past training programs about the newest and emerging radio tracers and therapeutics as these can show up on your board exams. Given the rapidly changing state of this topic area, your current faculty will likely have more up-to-date information than most available textbooks or question banks. Sixth, Use QBanks to teach you classic topics for nuclear medicine board exams. QBank question writers for nuclear medicine often focus on classic and high-yield concepts for nuclear medicine board exams. When test writers encounter these classic cases in their own clinical practices, I assume they will often flag these and include them on images in questions they prepare. And for disclosure, I am not a question writer for any QBank or for any board exam, but this is simply my perception that these test writers do often focus on fundamental concepts and that is helpful for you to use these questions to prepare. Seventh, Excellence, but not perfection, is required to succeed on board exams, including the nuclear medicine sections. You will likely be asked about nuclear medicine topics on board exams that you don't know or perhaps only know tangentially about. When this happens, keep your mental composure, make your best educated guess, and carry on. There is no textbook, QBank, online resource, podcast, or nuclear medicine attending physician that will or can teach you every nuclear medicine concept that can potentially show up on your board exams. This especially applies to the ABR nuclear medicine subspecialty exam. In summary, nobody knows everything in nuclear medicine, including your fellow test takers. However, diligent hard work and study will help you to know enough to succeed. You must prepare to succeed. If you want to read what I've presented here in written form, go ahead and check out the article on this topic posted under the Radiology Review Journal at theradiologyreview.com. If you want to access prior nuclear medicine podcast episodes, go ahead and go to your favorite podcast directory and find those, or go to theradiologyreview.com. Go to the Radiology Review podcast and you will see a search button towards the top of the page. Go ahead and click on that search button, type in nuclear medicine, and it will show many of the podcast episodes I've made dedicated to these topics. Also, under each podcast at theradiologyreview.com, for each specific episode, You can see content tags that I have created that you can simply click on and it will show you other podcast episodes that have the same tag, such as nuclear medicine. Thank you for listening and I will catch you on the next episode. 
content of this podcast is provided for informal educational purposes only for radiology trainees and radiologists. Medical practitioners, please make your own independent assessment before suggesting a diagnosis or recommending any course of treatment. This podcast should not be used for self-diagnosis or self-treatment and is not a substitute for independent professional medical care. Please consult your own physician regarding any diagnosis, imaging interpretation, or course of treatment.